Welcome to Globe Arts, I'm Zoe and this is Jacket. We really hope you enjoy our how-to tutorials. I'm going to show you how to create a wash and line painting using watercolours and a fine liner. The key thing about wash and line is to not get hung up on where the paint's going particularly. It's really a very loose technique where you can use your colours um, allow them to blend into each other, let there be runs from one to the other. It's a really liberating way to work. There are a number of ways you can do it. You can begin by applying water to your paper. So I'm just going to do that for the skyline. I'm going to make a land little landscape for us. And then find your watercolour. It's good to use spare paper around um, the piece you're working on just to sort of get a sense of the colour you've got and you can actually if you wish you can mix directly on the um, directly on the paper as well so I'm just trying to get the right consistency and colour way I'm going to show you how to create a relief there. print using a polystyrene plate cyan and a ultramarine I'm happy with that kind of colour it's a skyline so using a broad brush I'm just going to work my colour in. Because I've got water on the paper already, it's thinning the paint, so I'm just not worrying about staying within the edges too much. You notice I've got some masking tape around there. Later on when this is dry, we'll be able to actually just peel that away and you'll have a nice crisp edge. But I can, I can build up my colour quite sensitively using the wet paper and the looseness of the paint. So I'm quite happy with that as my skyline. I don't need to have a very straight line. That's very unnatural to do that. So just let it kind of escape into different places. I'm now going to move on to the mid ground of my landscape. Um, so I'm going to go for a kind of corn colour. So again, I want to test out that colour on the side before I apply it. This time I'm going to go straight in with the colour. I'm not going to worry about adding water um, to the paper. I'm just going to go right in with the colour so that I can build it up a little bit more strongly. So there we go. Notice how the yellow where it meets the blue turns a little green. That's fine. That's just it merging. And notice how the blue is starting to run in. It's a really lovely effect. I'm not going to panic about that and think, oh no, you know, that's meant to be my sky, this is meant to be my mid-ground, what's happening? Just let it, let it flow. Just enjoy what starts to happen. Put some extra tones in there. Just get a little bit of depth. Let that come quite far down, actually, into the foreground. Now I'm going to go for some greens. Now obviously when, when I go over the yellow I'm going to get a different tone of green. And I'm just loosely getting the shapes that I want to see in there. I want to try and create a little bit of interest between the skyline and that cornfield. And I also want to create the idea of some kind of taller cypressy tree type thing going on in the background. So I'm just loosely working in my ideas. Now it's all looking rather bright and insipid. I want to get some depth in there so I'm going to go a little bit deeper now using some umbery colours. So purples and things, once they mix with the green you'll get a nice deep brown and I can just start to pop that in, working those together. And this is a one stroke brush and it's really lovely for a wash but notice how I'm using the very tip of it here, it's sort of flat edge to create this sort of linear work and then the water is dispersing it and letting it stretch and run into other areas. So it's a really, really versatile brush and versatile paint. So I just want to get a little bit of 
flower going on, so maybe some grasses from the ground. The foreground is a really good opportunity to use your paint in a, in a more heavy and, and kind of um, less watered down effect so that you're actually using the full strength and colour because things that are near to us in a landscape do tend to appear stronger in colour and then fade off into the background. Okay, so this is the second part of our wash and line study. So earlier on we've um, used the watercolour um, to put in a, a, a rough um, version of the landscape that we're trying to work up. Now is the time to really use your pen work to tighten up the drawing. So we're going to allow the paint to almost escape parts of the tightness of the drawing. Okay, it will reveal itself as I get going. So I'm using a fine liner. This is a waterproof one, um, but you can use a, a non-waterproof one. It's, it's entirely up to you. You can use felt tip, but I think I think also the, the finer the line, the um, the more intricate and delicate it looks. Okay, so I'm just going to begin by putting in this um, kind of tall shrub-like. Um, tree thing I've got in the background and so I'm very delicately going to allow this to form. Now I'm not worrying about how much of my sky ends up in my um, shrub, that really doesn't matter to me. This is all about the free flow and enjoyment of drawing, the mark making. The watercolour will do its job just just by hinting at the colourway, it'll reveal itself. So I'm working very loosely, I'm barely touching the paper to be honest, I'm not pressing down at all, I'm just letting the pen flow over the surface and this little scribbly approach really gives me the feeling of that shrub moving in the breeze. And then working along, I like to work where I don't really take the pen off the paper because it helps me just create a nice flow to the drawing. You might feel better, you know, stopping and starting, but you'll probably find as you watch this video that I don't actually take the pen away and just work with it. I'm just creating that sort of skyline now. I think I might have a bit of a building there in the background, a hint of one. So, again, not worrying if I go onto that masking tape. The edges will be defined later. And then I kind of want to split up this field into different sections. So just gently coming across. And sometimes a broken line is all you need to just make a suggestion of distance and of movement in the landscape. These are more my grasses. Now these may require a little bit more attention and I'm gonna slowly work with my biro, sorry, with my fine liner. This is gonna allow the line to be stronger in tone and it's gonna allow me to retrace some of the lines to get a thicker line. You could, of course, change to a heavier fine liner if you have one, but but just by retracing, you can get that effect. So sometimes I'm following the shapes of the watercolour and then other times I'm letting the watercolour just escape. So it's kind of like another layer of grass work in that background. I'm going to leave that there, walk away from it for a while, come back to it decide whether there's anything else I'd like to do. Maybe I'll do something in the skyline just to break that up a little bit later on.